So everyone wants to know, what's wrong with the Pittsburgh Penguins? Every, people have talked about, you know, their defense is horrible, their goaltending is horrible, they're not scoring like they used to. Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin just aren't the players they used to be. Those are all true. But we also have to think about what are teams doing better than the Penguins to put them in this position? And there are a lot of things. Um, first thing I look at is personnel. The Penguins have lost a lot of key personnel over the years. And I always like to start with Jason Botterill. And who knows what Jason Botterill had to do with everything. Um, and for those of you who are wondering who the heck is Jason Botterill, uh, he was the Penguins assistant GM for a number of years under both Ray Shero and Jim Rutherford before he accepted the job with the Buffalo Sabres. Um, so he is their general manager. And Jason Botterill was always known for crunching numbers. He was always known as kind of like the salary cap wizard. He was the reason why all these players got the so-called hometown discount. So um, I knew personally when he left um, and accepted the Buffalo job that the, the Penguins would be in a boatload of trouble. And wouldn't you know that, of course, one of his first moves was to uh, trade for Connor Sherry and uh, Matt Hunwick to free the Penguins of some salary cap space. And because, you know, as anyone knows, the Penguins have had salary cap um, constraints over the, you know, the past 10 plus seasons with you know, Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, uh, Marc-Andre Fleury, Chris Letang, now Phil Kessel. You know, I could go on here. So I think and it's not just Jason Botterill. A lot of general managers have figured out that the Penguins have had cap issues and have made trades accordingly. And um, and I just think of, trade. you know, these trades as a whole. Um, one trade per I personally keep on going back to is... Uh, the trade for Ryan Reeves giving up a first round pick. And, you know, a lot of people are like, huh, what? And when Jim Rutherford said, well, the team needs an enforcer back there, you know, because of the Capitals and Flyers and such, I was like, okay, makes sense. But then, you know, as great as Ryan Reeves is, personally, he just didn't work out. He just didn't do anything. So, of course, they traded him by the end of the year. And then, you know, they also traded Ian Cole. Ian Cole was a big part of the Penguins' last two Stanley Cup runs, and they traded him for salary cap concerns because they figured they couldn't afford to keep him this year. And then, like I said, with Sherry, and then um, they let Tom Kuhnhockle walk in a free agency. Um, the year before, they let Nick Benito walk in free agency. And all these teams are just figuring out that the Penguins can't afford to have things the way they are. So, of course, they're taking away, keep, you know, you figure you've got a team with Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin. Of course, they have to be good. Um, but as anyone knows, uh, Sidney Crosby's had concussion problems over the past few years off and on. Um, he's actually returning tonight for the first time. Uh, since the New Jersey Devils game, I believe it was two weeks ago, if I do my math correctly, um, due to possible concussion problems, no one knows for sure. And Evgeny Malkin's kind of like a, a tale of two players, if you will. When he's on, he's on. He's easily the best player in the world when he's on. Um, but he's going through some struggles right now. And because they've lost a lot of key pieces, they don't really have anyone to bring them up. You know, they traded for Derek Broussard last year and that was, you know, a good move. Um, but he's also been hurt. He just came back as well. And, you know, I think people took for granted a lot of these role players, if you will, uh, their roles, for lack of a better term, in uh, the 2016-2017 Steely Cup runs. But, now you kind of look back and you wonder, wow, those were some tough players to lose. And of course, teams took advantage of it and good for them. 
And also in the personnel spec, you know, teams are just getting better. They're figuring things out. Um, again, I look at the Buffalo Sabres and their rebuild, and they've just been so much fun to watch. I mean, they were just up on Pittsburgh the other I, I'm sorry, they were down on Pittsburgh the other night, uh, four to one, and then of course they won an overtime five to four, and it's like, wow, just a year back, you wouldn't think Buffalo was capable of doing that. And just and even the way they played against the Lightning recently, you know, they they're just a new team and it and I'm not just talking Buffalo here. I'm talking, you know, Nashville's really taking it to the next level. The Capitals figured out last year how to beat Pittsburgh. Um, Columbus will be playing Pittsburgh for the first time this season on Saturday, I believe. And um, Columbus has kind of started to figure things out. And um, I know they've had a weird season so far, but I think talent-wise – they can beat Pittsburgh. And I thought even a couple years ago, they were capable of beating Pittsburgh and they just faced Pittsburgh at the wrong time. But teams are just starting to figure out the formula to success. And it's not just the Penguins who are affected. You know, we've talked about the Kings, we've talked about the Blackhawks. Um, we haven't talked about the Red Wings yet, but the Red Wings, you know, definitely have their own problems. But there's like this whole cyclical thing. And you always knew that at some point the Penguins would kind of meet their end, so to speak. That they would have to start from scratch again like they did after Mario and Yaramir. No, I don't think anyone in their right minds thought that this year would be it already. And the, the Penguins don't lack motivation. I don't think they lack, I think they want that fourth ring for Crosby, Malkin, and Latang, but they don't have the personnel to do it. They don't have the talent surrounding those guys to do it. And Jim Rutherford's already made one move. But let's just face reality here. There are a lot of teams who are hungry, they're talented, they want it just as badly, if not more, than the Penguins. And I'm not saying the Penguins are complacent. Just that a lot of teams feel that it's their time. And, you know, maybe we're starting to see the decline of the Penguins as we know it in the post-lockout era. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, that's just reality. That's how teams work. Every team in professional sports, excuse me, goes through kind of like these, these cycles, if you will. I mean, even the most talented teams go through these cycles. They're, they may have a longer time frame for success and a shorter time frame for turnaround, but they all go through it. And the Penguins are no exception, and we may be starting to see the decline. I mean, we're already starting to see a lot of teams play really well. I mean, we see all the talent in Colorado coming to fruition. We're starting to see Vancouver come to fruition, and, you know, I understand that um, you know the Penguins destroyed the Canucks in Vancouver earlier this year, but you know looking back on that Canadian trip, the seems like an outlier for the Penguins right now. I mean they've been struggling mightily since that trip, but you know Winnipeg, of course, what you know Winnipeg has been really playing well, especially lately. They've been playing like we expected them to after last year. And then even in the East with the Tampa Bay Lightning and, you know, the Lightning just destroyed them on the power play recently. It was embarrassing to watch, to be quite frank. And you're just seeing all these teams who want it. And the, I mean, do, does it explain the Penguins poor defense? No. I mean, they've lost some key guys on defense over the years. They have... Justin Schultz out right now. I don't think Chris Letang will ever be what he used to be. He just plays hard. And that's just the nature of his game. Um, but I think we're starting, maybe, I think we're just starting to see that window of opportunity closing. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the core three guys and Crosby Malkin and Letang to add in Chris Kunitz and Marc-Andre Fleury, 
have three rings each together with the penguins. And of course, you know, Kunitz and Fleury moved on as well. And you, you, you always knew the band would be breaking up, but I don't think anyone really anticipated how it would happen and when it would happen, but here we are. And that's okay. And I think another thing to point out though, is um, when the team announced uh, Jim Rutherford's extension, it probably came at the worst time because the Penguins were struggling. And a lot of people are scratching their heads like, why would you announce such a thing, you know, during this time? And, um, you know, you look at Jim Rutherford hanging around and he probably was the reason why Jason Botterill walked because, you know, Botterill probably felt that after Ray Sherrill was fired, that that job would be his. They brought in Rutherford and then they kept, they extended Rutherford. So if I'm Jason Botterill, I'm going to walk too and I'm going to show that karma is what it is. And I feel like so far in Buffalo, that's what Botterill's doing. And, you know, every team over the past 10 years wanted to be the Penguins. And I feel like these teams are starting to get there. And I think it's a combination of the superstars declining and other teams just wanting it. And that's fine. And, you know, full disclosure here, I'm going to get a little personal. You know, I'm wearing my Pitt shirt here. So, you know, I have seen a number of Penguins games in Pittsburgh and on the road. And they've been fun to watch for a number of years. And this year they're just miserable. But, you know, reality has to set in here. And I do think they are going to sneak into the playoffs though. I do, I don't think motivation is lacking, but I do think they're going to fall on their faces in the first round. I don't, I just don't think they have it in them to go far. I think that full window is closed. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe they'll prove us all wrong. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll fire Mike Sullivan and then they'll go to the Stanley Cup final and win it all again. Cause that's already happened twice. But I don't think that's the case anymore. They've got a lot of moving parts and I think they've just got a new identity to form. But we'll see how it plays out. It's only a quarter of the way through the season. Um, but I, I think they need to start preparing for long term and really figuring out first off, you know, who's going to stay and who's going to go. Secondly, who's going to eventually replace Crosby and Malkin and everything. But most importantly, they need to adapt to the modern game because the game has changed. And, you know, these guys have kept up with the game, but it seems like a lot of teams are kind of jumping ahead of them a little bit. But please leave your thoughts in the comments. Also make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And to all of my American viewers, have a wonderful Thanksgiving.